Today I'm going to be talking about the microbial fuel cell. A fuel cell is a device which uses fuel to make electricity through a chemical reaction. The most common type of fuel cell is a hydrogen fuel cell, which uses hydrogen to produce electricity. The microbial fuel cell uses biomass, such as sugars, to produce electricity using bacteria. Whereas traditional biomass energy comes from burning the biomass to make heat, which is then used to produce electricity, microbial fuel cells can convert biomass directly to electricity. Biomass breaks down into carbon dioxide and water when exposed to oxygen. This process releases energy and can be facilitated by combustion or by bacteria. When there is no oxygen present, biomass cannot be fully decomposed into carbon dioxide and water. However, bacteria can still partially break down biomass without oxygen. These types of bacteria are called anaerobic bacteria. Some anaerobic bacteria, called electrogens, can break down biomass and produce carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions, and electrons. In a microbial fuel cell, these electrons can be harnessed to make electricity. In order to generate an electric current and complete the reaction, the hydrogen ions and electrons combine with oxygen in a separated area to form water. Oxygen must be kept separate from the bacteria region so that it cannot harm the bacteria or combine with the hydrogen ions and electrons without them entering the circuit. A microbial fuel cell consists of two half cells immersed in water. In the first half cell, bacteria feed on biomass, often called the substrate, and produce hydrogen ions and electrons. The bacteria live on the surface of an electrode, and this electrode is called the anode because electrons flow out of it. The hydrogen ions migrate through the cell and pass through a membrane into the other half cell. The electrons are unable to migrate through the water and must travel through the electrode and into a wire connecting them to an electric load such as a light bulb. The overall reaction for the anode is shown above. After passing through the load, the electrons come to the other half of the cell and enter an electrode. This electrode is called the cathode because electrons flow into it. This half cell is exposed to air so that oxygen can enter the cell. Once the oxygen enters, it combines with the hydrogen ion and electron to produce water. The overall reaction for the cathode is shown above. Let's look at an example reaction. Here we have graphics of water, oxygen, CO2, and sugar as an example substrate. The bacteria will produce positively charged hydrogen ions and negatively charged electrons. Here, oxygen is black, hydrogen is red, carbon is green, and electrons are blue. The chemical formula for sugar is C6H12O6. And next we have an animation of this reaction. The membrane is a very important part of this system. The membrane is semi-permeable, meaning that some molecules can pass through it and some cannot. In this case, the hydrogen ions can easily pass through the membrane while oxygen molecules cannot. This is crucial for keeping oxygen out of the left cell while allowing hydrogen ions to migrate to the right cell. Not all microbial fuel cells need membranes, but there always has to be a way to keep oxygen away from the microbes and also away from the electrons before they reach the cathode. The microbial fuel cell is unique in that it can generate electricity directly from biomass. In this video, we addressed how they work, but there are still several questions to explore. What are the biological mechanisms of electrogens? How can we improve the design of microbial fuel cells? What are the limitations of microbial fuel cells? And finally, what are the applications of microbial fuel cells?